Hi, Mariana. My name is Ellen. I'll be correcting this set of essays for you. We've got coastline coverage. It's a very simple chart. Let's see what you did. The bar, we don't call them bar graphs. We call them line graphs, or we call them by chart, bar charts or pie charts, okay? So the bar chart illustrates the kilometers of coastline coverage of five different countries, Canada and Asia. Huh? Overall, it can be seen that Canada is a country with the highest number of kilometers of coastline, while Japan is the one with the least. Furthermore, there is a noticeable difference between all the countries except for Philippines and Japan, whose coastline distance is similar. Okay, whose coastline, wait, whose coastline distances are similar. And it's not distance, it's uh, coverage, because you're not talking about the distance whose coastline distance is similar. That doesn't make sense. Um, let's see. There's a noticeable difference between all the countries except for Philippines and Japan whose, uh, you could, uh, whose coastline kilometers are similar. You could have said that. Um, or whose coverage of coastline is similar. So I didn't like this word distance here. It felt strange. Other than that, so far, so good. I like this. All right. Canada counts for the longest. Again, I don't like distance. Um, you could have said the most kilometers of coastline coverage at almost 100,000. Probably Indonesia with a little more than 70,000. On the other hand, coastline coverage of Russia is considered to be slightly under 60. Okay. Why is this on the other hand? Um... You're just talking to me about the top three, so I don't think that on the other hand would have been the right word here, but we'll talk about this a little more in detail. In terms of all the territories with the smallest coastline, both Philippines and Japan account for less than a third of Canada's coastline coverage, good, with just over 30,000 and approximately 25,000 respectively. Um, I don't love this respectively here just because Philippines, Japan felt kind of far away. I guess it works though. It's fine. It's just the respectively was very removed from Philippines and Japan. So made it a little difficult to follow, but it's okay. It's fine. Grammatically, it's correct. Let me read it one more time. Both Philippines and Japan account for less than a third with over 30,000 and approximately 25,000. All right. Yeah, no, it's fine. This on the second read, it, it reads more easily. Therefore, these two islands, okay, have, mm, Let's see. These two islands have, I sort of like you talking about in terms of distance, have more similar, not the, have more sim, no, not even more similar, have similar coastline coverage compared to the rest of the countries described. That would have been better. So on the whole, I thought you did a really good job of this. Um, this is not one of my favorite tasks because it's very simple. Um, occasionally in IELTS, they do ask you to write something, um, you know, a really very simplistic diagram, but this for me is almost too simple. Uh, so it doesn't really give us an opportunity to see how you would maybe perform some other tasks that are a little more complex. Um, but your grammar was very good. There were just a couple of little spots that I thought felt were a little awkward and I pointed them out to you. Um, like I told you, I didn't like this. This was wrong in terms of coherence and cohesion, this linker here, because on the other hand is something we use for the opposite uh, to show contrast, but there really wasn't contrast because you were literally going, you know, first, second, third. So on the other hand, would have been more appropriate if you had compared Canada and then you had gone straight away to Japan. And that's the other thing I want to talk to you about. That would have been a very interesting way to do this. You could have talked about uh, Canada and Japan together, okay? So you've got the first here, which is around 100, and you've got Japan, which is like, I don't know, what number is that, like 20, 25? So you could have, yeah, 25, you could have said it was like, you know, one-fourth of Canada, et cetera, et cetera. And then you could have put the other three together, Okay, in a separate paragraph, you could have talked about, um, you know, the middle coastline coverage countries. So I'm just giving you some suggestions. I'm not saying that this is the right way to do it. Not at all. There are multiple right ways to do it. The way you did it was fine. The reason I'm pointing this out 
is because um, of this expression here on the other hand. So if you had done it the way I'm suggesting with like Canada and then Japan, so focusing on the highest and then the lowest, and then spending another paragraph here, you could have done it that way. Okay, it's just another way to approach it. And I find a lot of times that doing task ones like this is actually very helpful. Um, so you'll see it if you continue on the course that that's one way to approach these. Okay, um, overall, very good job. I like your language. It was mostly accurate, mostly. Um, but you know, it just needed um, some corrections here and there. Okay, and so now we've got international marketing. Let's see. Globalization has brought many changes over the last few decades. You need an S here. Some argue that one, what? Some argue that one of the most relevant might be international marketing, which is often known for its detrimental effects over the own country's economy. However, I believe that their overall benefits are greater. Whose overall benefits? That's confusing. So you've got some pronouns here that don't really make sense. So, which is often known for its detrimental effects over the host country's economy. However, I believe its overall benefits are greater. Okay? So fine in terms of the organization, no problems there, but you have to be careful with some of that grammar. Let's keep going. It is widely agreed that international marketing sometimes has a negative effect over the local economy. This is mainly caused by the lowest prices of the products, lowest, no, the lower uh, prices of the products manufactured by some powerful developing countries. These often offer poor working conditions to their employees and use low quality materials, which decreases the production costs significantly. You can't separate your verb from your object. So you have to take the adverb and you have to put it at the end, which decreases the production cost significantly. As a result, if international markets uh, S can offer cheaper products, there will be a lot of people that will prefer to purchase the foreign product instead of the local. Therefore, the benefits from the local industries will be affected negatively. Okay, so what I've seen here is that it's well written, it's very nice, however, it's off topic. You've misinterpreted the question you've misinterpreted what international marketing is. You're talking more about international trade, but international trade and international marketing are not the same thing. And so it needs to be, um, you basically need to look up to see what international marketing is. Okay, so read up on it, understand what it is, so you could understand then how you should have approached this topic, okay? All right, um, this is actually really very common. A lot of people misconstrue what um, international marketing is. Okay, okay, that's interesting. All right, um, let's continue. On the other hand, international marketing can also become beneficial for the local economy. There is no denying that a high, not highest, a high number of competitors in the local or even international market will increase businesses' pressure to survive. As a consequence, most of them will invest some money in their innovation and development departments, okay? You don't need that comma, in order to improve their products and services. In addition, this would foment the exchange of ideas between entrepreneurs and their eagerness, careful with your vocabulary, for knowledge. For the, Why? Why would it do that? Why would it... Uh, yeah, explain it. You mentioned it, but you didn't explain it, so it's a problem with task achievement. For this reason, I consider that the benefits outweigh the negative effects of international marketing as they can help to develop the society. Okay, um, it's a little light on development, this paragraph. Um, and again, the problem for me really is that it's off topic. It's You're talking about international trade, whereas international marketing is something really considerably different. You didn't, did you talk about ideas? You did talk about ideas. Did you talk about culture? No, there wasn't really anything about culture, exchange of ideas, language, and culture. Uh, you talked about the spread of ideas. Other than that, really nothing. So it was light on, on task achievement. And you can see that at some point I said, okay, well, why? Explain it. If I say that, that means you need to explore it more. You haven't explored it enough. All right. And so, of course, that affects task achievement. Taking everything into account, International marketing has both advantages and disadvantages for the economy and society. 
Nonetheless, in my opinion, the increasing rates of innovation and development caused by the market competitivity, competitivity, all right, maybe competitive, I don't know, competition, probably, outweigh the loss of income between some local businesses, not between, among, okay, or for some local businesses. So this is good in a lot of ways, um, but it, I could say that there were mistakes consistently, um, mistakes in task achievement for sure. There were mistakes in um, grammar. There were some. Your grammar on the whole was really very good, uh, but there were some mistakes throughout this, and I had to correct them fairly consistently. Um, I'm really interested to see what you would write in another on another topic. So um, one that you're, you know, on topic with, I'd love to see that so we can see in, you know, how you're doing in task achievement with something that maybe is a topic that's more familiar to you. Uh, so I know that you've taken the exam before. I feel pretty certain that we can help you um, get the score you need. So I really want to encourage you to sign up for one of the different options with us that you'll see in the link in your email. Um, Hopefully we'll work together. I see a lot of good elements in your writing, but what you need now is really need to just pull everything together, um, figure out where the weak spots are, and then, um, you know, work on, on getting them uh, corrected. Okay, so hopefully we'll see more work from you. I'm looking forward to it. Thanks for sending this in. Good luck.